Hello everybody, welcome back to another episode on the Mindful SMP server. Cranky here, we're now on episode 11 of this multiplayer adventure. We're here back at the base because we have made a little transaction with our partner, not, not our partner, our neighbor here, Kenny. And we're going to have to go and pick up that transaction because we placed our payment bin a little bit of ways away from spawn just so that, you know, we didn't run into any law issues, specifically people that occupy that building over there. But uh, yeah, it's over in this area somewhere. So I'm going to hop over there. I'm going to grab my diamonds and we are going to deliver our payload to our good neighbor, Kenny. One thing I'd forgotten to mention in my last episode is my lack of diamond gear. As you can see here, I am in complete iron gear. And the reason for that was in Kenny's video, he was building his mindful park area and he noticed that there was some zombie sounds in the vicinity. And I had noticed that in the past before and I wanted to get down in the caves and clear out some of the, the hostile mobs there and light the place up. I cleared a Cleared up almost everything in the area, lit almost everything up. There was one last spot that I needed to do, and uh, I died. I got hit by a poisonous cave spider, got shot by a skeleton. I died in my haste to get back to my equipment. I didn't grab a pickaxe, and things just despawned, and it, it was horrible. But that's why we don't have any gear. But... You know, we have that gear that we enchanted and we haven't put that on yet. So we'll put that on at a later point. I don't need it quite yet, but we are here at the payment spot from, well, this is not the jungle smuggler. And whoa, we got ourselves, that looks like two of each color. So that's 40 diamonds. I, I'm, I was not expecting that. I was expecting maybe 20, but uh, let's uh, get rid of the evidence. We're going to grab this over here. We're gonna head back to the base. We're gonna grab those parrots and we're gonna drop them off with Kev Kenny. I'll see you guys in a bit. We've made it back to the base and we're gonna head over to our little stash. And I was expecting some visitors from law enforcement. So I did a little bit of redecorating. And uh, you'll probably notice that these are not parrots in any sense of the word. And that's because we've hidden our parrots somewhere. You'll see that there's some buttons here and some pressure plates here, but they don't actually do anything. These are purely direct decorative. And I've really hidden the switch for our door, if we can really call it that. But, uh, you know, I was expecting law enforcement to come. They'd come in here and see that I had a stash of chickens and they would be on their merry way. But... I never got that visit, so that was kind of unfortunate. But at the same time, I really like this area and this chicken is in my way. But basically, if you see right here, there's a very small thing right there that you can see the hitbox of just barely. And if we chicken, you're in my way. If we uh, do that, you'll see our little doorway down into here where we have our stash of parrots is. So what we're going to do is we're going to, I'm going to close this up because these parrots do want to fly away once they're freed. We're going to free them and you, you see that right away. They're trying to get away, but we got ourselves the leads. So it looks like we had 28 parrots in here. I'm going to start by grabbing, hmm, how should we do this? I'm going to put these birds over here, the ones that we're going to give to Kenny, they were one of each color or two of each color. Sorry. So we're going to put those there. We're going to grab two white ones. Why is that? Okay. Two cyan ones. We need to grab two. Okay. That works. We got a green one and a red one. So we're gonna have to grab another green one and another red one. So I believe that's one or two of each color. So let's see, two reds, two cyans, two 
grays, two blues, and two greens, it looks like. So the rest of these guys that are flying around, we're gonna grab, I'm gonna drop them off there, see if we can grab as many as we can. They all wanna get out, I don't know why, but uh, you know, they're, they're safer here. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab as many as we can. These guys flying around, you know, they're not, they're not, they're not safe. They, they need to be put in a safe spot. And that's my blue guy there. This green guy's flying around. And the gray guy. So that looks like I've used every lead, which means I can now kind of push them over in the corner so that they're away from everybody else. I can unlead everyone here and relead all the people that haven't been led already. Uh, let's see, Cyan, where's three more? It looks like these three guys here. And we're gonna be on our way out. I really hope they follow me up here. I might have to break my staircase. Come on guys. Yeah, let's break the staircase. I wasn't anticipating this. There's gotta be a better way. So what I ended up doing was breaking the floor and kind of leading them up. But uh, this is really a sight to see. That's eight, no, 10 birds following me. Of all different colors. We're, we're a divi diverse group of parrots, but uh, these parrots have found a new home with uh, our good friend Kenny, and they just need to cooperate so that they can get put into their home. So these birds like to fly around and get caught up on things, and these leads break a lot easier than with other animals. But it looks like we have everyone. We have two greens, two reds, two blues, two cyans, and two grays. So there's that. We'll put a sign up. I said we'll put a sign up. And here is delivery of our secret agreement. Jungle smuggler. Smuggle, jungle smuggle. I, jungle smuggler. There we go. So Kenny, you have been paid, or you have been, goods have been delivered. Now let's go fix up our base. Everything's all fixed up, and now we're just gonna close our door, and you can see there, it's nice and flush. Nobody will know that we have a hidden stash of parrots. But yeah, Kenny's got his birds. And, you know, normally I wasn't gonna pay taxes because this is a illegal business. But then I thought about the children. And, you know, education is important. And education is paid through taxes. So I am gonna do the right thing. I'm gonna head over to the shopping district and I'm gonna drop my four diamonds in there as our 10% tax. I technically made for the 44, 45, 46 diamonds. But uh, since I can't do 10% of six diamonds, we're gonna have to wait till we get four more diamonds and then we can fill in that one last diamond. But we're gonna go to the shopping district, drop our tax payment in, and I'll see you in a bit. Road Tides joined the server. I don't know if you guys have met him yet. He is the newest member of our server. I don't think he sees me here, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna drop our, let's see, we can split this up, and that is our four diamonds, and that's our payment for tax, so everyone has evidence that I did pay my taxes, and things are looking good. Now what we really wanna work on today is in this area again, you may have remembered from the last episode that we worked on our villager breeder, and it is going great. We did add a few additions to the breeder, and they're, they're very simple ones, but basically we have Brownsy there, and we have his companions, and they're all named Helper. So we got one in that corner, 
one in that corner, one in that corner, and one in that corner. And now what that allows us to do is if they get, if the baby villagers get stuck right there, they'll see this zombie pigmen, they'll get scared, they'll run in this direction. Same thing goes here, if they get stuck here, they'll see this guy here, and they'll get scared, run in this direction, where the water flow will take them into the system. I'm not worried about the back end because this is all water, but why are there potatoes down there? Anyways, um, I haven't really been in this area all that much, but I have noticed that we have gotten a fair amount of villagers. I am worried that they're going to start getting crammed. So we're going to have to make a transportation system for them so that we can get them out of this area and out of this crammed space. But the problem is we can't really make a transportation system without anywhere to transport them. And so, as I mentioned in my last episode, the idea is that we get ourselves a villager trading area. And I was scouting the area out for a good spot to put it. And I kind of don't want to mess this up. There's a lot of connecting tunnels, like this entire area, that there's a tunnel that's connected to everything. And it's, it's an incredible place to just kind of explore. And I, I kind of want to leave that intact. So I was thinking, I also need it to be more than 32 blocks away from that. So that could be risky. But this area over here, it, it's a perfect, it's kind of a divot right into the area. Like the area comes and it, it curves around here. And this spot right here is like perfect for where this, this uh, villager trading system can go. And I'm thinking I want it to be kind of flush with um, the wall. I, I know that I want 20 villagers ish. And so I'm thinking starting somewhere around here, probably where this dirt ends and going into that wall over there, it should be suffice. I haven't done the exact counting yet, but you know, just from a distance, I can see, you know, that whole area since that is kind of a hard cut right there. If we fill that in with like a villager, villager trading system, it'll look a little bit less drastic and we can have a villager system just kind of sitting over here in this corner and we can go, we can send our villagers over. We can do an automatic, automated system if we wanted to. And yeah, that's going to be the plan for today. I can't say today for some reason. I keep saying to today, but anyways, uh, I forgot to bring a lot of stone with me. I mean, stone's not that difficult to get, but basically what we're going to be doing is we're going to be building this out of stone bricks. We're going to go over here and kind of pick the starting spot for it. And the design that I picked has a, a three wide area that needs to be on either side. And so it's going to be, let's see, do I have enough for that? Three plus three is six plus 20 is 28 or 20, 20, 28, 26. So I think if I start here, I want it to be flush with this, this grass. So I'm going to start it right. I don't know how tall it is. So I'm just going to do it right here and we'll start there. I don't know if I can actually do this. So that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, and 32. I think that works. Yeah, I think that works. We'll probably have to clear out that area there and then a lot of the area behind it. But yeah, I like it. I returned back to my base and got a bunch of materials that I need for this build. But the build I'm building today is based off of Froliofs. I, I apologize if I pronounced that incorrectly. It'll be down in the 
comments or the description. But Froleoff built a system for 1.13 that is, it actually has a very genius use of trap doors instead of fence posts and such like that, such like that. And uh, I, I really liked his design, so I'm going with that. One of the problems with choosing that design, though, is he makes it very clear that it's best to build it going from east to west or west to east. Uh, unfortunately, with the design or the choice of places I have, if I wanted to go west to east or east to west, I either block off that off or I block that off. There's really no good way for me to do it in that direction. So I have to do it from north to south, and that means I have to do a lot of, how should I say, trickery with the rail system. But that's fine, because, you know, I got time. So basically what I need to do is I need to clear out all of this area. I don't know if, I think I have to go down another floor, no. I think we'll be good here. So if, no, actually it does need to go down one more. Because if this is my bottom area, it needs to go down. I'm confused now. This is my bottom floor. There needs to be a path for the rails. If it's only one high, if this is blocked off, then it's one high and they get suffocation damage. So yes, it does have to go down another floor. Is that right? Hmm. Let me go check out his video and I'll be right back. I was right the first time. It is two down. However, it's not this block here that needs to be cleared out. It's actually the block behind it. So I'm gonna have to fill that back in. Most of this will be not visible, so that's all right. Um, we'll figure that out later. It looks like that is all we need to do. And then we'll, I'm out of stone. That's fine, we'll figure that out later. What I do need to do is clear out this path right here. It's gonna to be too deep. And then there's gonna be a block on top of it allowing for a too deep path under it. So I'm gonna clear this out all the way till the end. Um, this will all need to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. Bear with me because I do want to explain a little bit of what I'm doing. And let's see, that needs to be three blocks. So I need to clear out two more blocks. And I can figure out the rest at a later point. But with that, we have our path cleared out. And I also need to clear out a path behind it. So I'm gonna go ahead and clear this out. I do need to clear out some more space behind it, and I'll explain that in a little bit. I've cleared a bunch out. We've left three on each side. And to fix my problem with the rails, so basically I need these rails to go in this direction. But the problem with that is if I put that there, they connect. So, you know, if we did that, they still connect. So the only real option is for us to do something like so. And that'll allow us to do that. But once we do something like that, they'll connect, which means we'd have to do a whole thing of three going all the way down. I've found it to be easier to just do something like so, let me get the right rails. And then we'll just set these down like this, skipping one each time. We'll do two, one, two, one, so on and so forth. And we'll do the same thing on this side as well. And the reason we're doing this is so that, let me get to the other side and I'll show you. When we put down our power rails, they connect like this. When we put them like this, they connect like that. And then it allows it to be separate here. So, I mean, it saves us one every three. It's not a huge savings, but at the same time, it's, it's not negligible. So that's how we're fixing our little directional issue. We're gonna have to do the same thing up there once we put some rails up there as well. But yeah, that's about it. I need to now clear this out so that I can put uh, levers inside to power these rails, but once we've done that, it'll be pretty much good to go. Everything in place, as you can see here, we have levers behind this and everything is powered. And now what's gonna happen is we're gonna set down some rails 
along this line right here. And basically it's gonna go like that. And so when they land here, so what's gonna happen is the villagers are going to land here in a cart. Since this is a solid block, it'll push them out onto this rail and they will go down into the system. So I'm just gonna go ahead and fill this out. And then we're gonna have to find a nice spot to power this up, but that goes all the way down there. And yeah, that's basically the transportation system for this. I need to find a good spot to see how far this will power because I want to use as few levers as possible. I mean, not that levers are expensive or anything, but still, it's it's nice to save. All right, now everything's pretty much covered up. We're going to have to do some terraforming here so that we can cover this up. But that's not a problem, and we'll take care of that later. This is going to help us be able to get out and things like that. And we got the backing here. All we got to do now is grab some trap doors. I chose to go with the dark oak and basically we wanted to be able to open up like so we're gonna leave it all closed at the moment but this is gonna go all the way down and this is where our trading villagers are going to rest and the trap doors actually allow us to drop them down when we don't need them which is a nice touch so that is in place and yeah this is coming along I'm thinking now that with most of the that part taken care of, we're gonna go ahead and go into a time lapse. I, it's been a while since I've done time lapse, so yeah, I think that's what we're gonna do. I might stop in the middle so that I can explain the redstone and stuff, but there's really not that much to explain. So let me get some rest, and then we'll go ahead and get into a time lapse. Now that's the basic design of the farm and everything's pretty much in there. There's a few things that we forgot to put in or not so much forgot, but it wasn't really worth putting in a time lapse. One of those things is this string here. This string is actually going to detect whether our um, villagers are in the bay or not. And so it is a fairly important piece of the puzzle. And I uh, just want to make sure I get all of them. 
And I noticed something really weird about this farm. It's that if you hit the string, I guess, manually, I'm, I'm not sure if manually is the right word, but sometimes the things won't act like it'll activate too many of these and it kind of breaks the farm. So what you got to do is you got to see if I can get back there. You have to go and manually fix it like so. We'll just put that right there and fill that in with water and we should be good. I need to remove all of this because we have things that need to get put back here. But yeah, that's pretty much the farm. I didn't go into depth about, depth about the redstone, but basically what happens is if I can get down here without hurting myself. When the observer sees a change in the string, it will power a repeater that sits behind the observer. And once that repeater gets powered, it powers, uh, this is, okay. It That repeater powers a sticky piston, which is under there. It's a one tick pull, so it'll push that up or pull it down. If it's in the up position, it gets powered. The comparator gets powered and it opens up our little gates. So yeah, that's basically how that works. Um, you might've noticed, <clears throat> excuse me, while I was, Working with the cauldrons, I accidentally pulled poured water. I accidentally poured water outside of the cauldron. It messed up my rails. It messed up all the rails down here, and that was a complete pain to fix up. But it is all fixed now. This is still open, so we'll have to, you know, do some terraforming down here, as I mentioned. But we'll do that a little bit later. There's another piece I need to terraform, and it's actually that piece over there. As you can see, we have bays here for trading villagers, but this is actually covering that up. I don't know if I want to do a hard cut right here. I think I kind of want to do like a gradual thing. So that it looks like it's kind of inside built inside the mountain. Let's take a little nap here. And yeah, I mean, that's basically the gist of it. It's actually functional at the moment. There's a few pieces that are missing. I, I need to put some buttons up here so that we can release our villagers. But other than that, we need a water stream up there to send the villagers through, which we're going to go ahead and do right now. But in terms of like everything that it needs to function, it is all there. So obviously if we put water in here now, it'll pour out and break our farm. So we're going to go ahead and close that up. We can close this up as well. And we're going to finish decorating things a little bit later, maybe today, depending on how things go and also the rail system for everything. But before we do that, you know, we need to set up the water stream that this is gonna push into. And basically it's gonna start here. And as you can see, because of these, whether they're open or closed, it'll still always flow one block. I guess it, the block above its open position. And same is true with, uh, I guess we need all these open. Uh, sorry, I'm a little unprepared today, but bear with me. We'll probably have to activate all of those uh, strings so that these open up, but that's no biggie. We can fix that. What we do need to do is get some signs, which I don't have at the moment. So I'm gonna get some signs. We're gonna continue the stream all the way over here and it is going to actually need to go up one and it's going to wrap around the back so that if they don't get put into a bay, they'll actually circle around, go back into the system and come back here. So let me go ahead and grab some signs and we'll fill this up and I'll see you in a little bit. You will not believe how many times I forgot something back at the spawn base and I had to run back and I just keep doing it. It's, it's horrible. But we got our water streams in there. Let's walk out here so we can take a better look. But you can see there, I don't know if that's even. Looks all right. But yeah, we, we have our water streams in and one thing we need to do is grab this. We'll get this out of the way so we can put this here as well. And we're gonna get back up there. And we're going to put our powered rail like so, and 
that all I need? No, it'll be something like this. I, I haven't worked it out completely, but it's gonna do something like this and then it's going to go up into the system like so. And I haven't decided if I wanna change these to, I know I want these to be these. I don't know if I want the ground. It's something that's not gonna be visible so it doesn't really matter all that much. I'm debating whether I want to do it for consistency sake, but that's basically going to be our return system. When the villagers are sent back and they aren't killed, which will have a kill switch. Um, I, I still haven't figured out what I want to do with that. And yeah, let's get back up here. I need to clear all this out because those blocks will suffocate the villagers. And just bring it all the way around. Say hey to Rotide. And I think that's all I need to go for now. We'll set that down. I don't have enough powered rails to finish this up. But that's not a problem. We can always run back to the base like we've done a couple times today. And to power these rails, I think the best option would be to actually get down here, put a switch here which will allow us to power both this line and this line as well and so now with this system when the when the minecart comes down it, the water flow will push it into this rail because it's solid block here it'll push into here and it'll hop on this rail because of the solid block here it'll either go this way bounce and go that way or actually it won't go this way because doesn't have any momentum. Solid block will push it this way and then it'll go back into our system. So that's all good there. I think I'm safe to close this up now, except I don't have a way into the back. And yeah, I think we're pretty much good with that. Oh, no. One thing we need to do back here is, as I mentioned, these things are currently powered off. They need to be powered on, which means I need to grab water again. Or what I can do is I can go to the front and I can try to mess around with the the string and see if I can get them all in the on position. So I'm going to play around with that and I'll see you guys shortly after. I just spent all this time powering all these cauldron powered comparators and I realized that they needed to be in the off position when they began. Really not starting off very well. I mean, starting off in the middle wherever we're at we're, we're just not we're not on our game today but uh i'm gonna fill this back in fill them back in with water and we should be ready to go and i might do a test run with um myself I'm not sure if i fit the profile of a villager but uh we certainly will try um do i have water yes so that is what I need and that. So we'll make an unlimited water source and we're just gonna start filling. Oh no, no, no. what happened there? Whew. I hate cauldrons. The system is fully functional. You'll see up here, the doors are all closed and that's the posi position that they need to be in. This rail system is in and it goes all the way down and we have it going into another perpendicular, perpendicular? Yes, perpendicular rail system here. It'll go here and either go in this direction or go in this direction and bounce off the wall and go into here. We'll drop down here, they'll drop into the bays and once all the bays are filled, we can get over here quick enough. They will continue coming here and they'll go back into the system. So that's all finished. I'm not gonna be able to demonstrate this working today because I don't have the transportation system from our breeder over there. That'll be set up in the next episode. Um, so we're pretty much done with this. There's a few things I wanna do. The first thing I wanna do here is to close this system up here. We'll have to do a little bit of terraforming, which is fine. We'll, we'll probably have to open this back up at a later point just cause we need to finish that system there, so either send it to kill or send it back into the system. 
But again, we're going to finish that in the next episode because I've been working on this for a very long time. Despite how long this episode may be, we actually spent quite a while here. And, uh, yeah, I, I think I need a break. But, um, we're going to close this up. I want that brick though. We're going to close that up and we're going to do a little bit of terraforming. Um, just basically kind of close this up, make it a little bit more natural. And yeah, I think that's good. That looks natural enough. Last thing we need to do over here is I actually want all of the bays visible. And that means I need to clear up to at least this spot right here. And I don't mind some of this uh, terrain covering it because I want it to look like I'm building it within the mountain. However, oh, did not expect that. I don't want it to, um, how should I say? I don't want to completely remove all of this terrain. I just want enough that it, it's visible and then some of this can come off. I'm thinking maybe something like that and then we'll turn some of these into dirt. I don't have any dirt on me at the moment, but that's looking good. Let's uh, change this to our brick. And yeah, that looks like it's pretty good. I think I wanna turn that into dirt and maybe that into dirt as well. But other than that, everything's looking good. Everything is functional, though you haven't been able to see it in action yet. You will see it in the next episode and yeah, I'm pretty happy with what we got done. We need to close up a lot of the things. There's a lot of aesthetic things that need to happen. Um, actually, there is one more thing that I need to do. And first off, we're going to need to put some chests here. And this is basically going to be... That's not what we wanted. This is going to be like our system that... That's all right. When we want to trade with the villagers, this will be like the chest for that. Each villager will have its own, I guess, trading supplies chest. And uh, I hate angles. So say we have a cleric here and he's kind of our emerald maker. We put a bunch of rotten flesh in one of the chests. That the uh, so if the clerics right here. We put rotten chests in here, and then we can just trade like that. So let me fill in all of these, and then we're gonna have to put some signs on all of them. I will do this off camera because this is very tedious. One last thing is there's a chance that baby zombies can get in here. Um, I think Froliov solved that with some carpet. I. I'm a little more paranoid, so I'm going to cover this up. I wanted to use brick for this, but I don't have any clay at the moment. So I'm just going to do uh, half slabs of smooth stone at the moment. And then once we get some clay, we'll turn that into brick. But yeah, this gives us enough room to actually click on their heads. We won't be able to see what they are. Well, I mean, we will, but it's, it'll be difficult. But that's what the signs are for. So I'm going to get all those signs in. I'm going to sleep. And then we'll send this up episode off. And there we have it. We have our villager trading system all set up. I am worried about mobs a little bit, especially with the rail system in the back. If we have an overflow of villagers and the zombie gets in the back, we'll have an overflow of zombie villagers. But that's something we can figure out in a later episode. We got all our chests in. We got all our signs in. We changed those... Um, smooth stone over there to grass or dirt. And once they turn into grass, I think it'll look a lot better. It kind of looks like there was a landslide or something and it covered it up. I, I, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not good at this, uh, making a story, but yeah, I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, once we get everything set up in the back and all of the rail systems under there, all set up and connected, we can close that up and everything will be finished. And then we can start trading. 
And that's kind of what this is all about. We can start trading, get ourselves some mending, and maybe open up a mending shop because I think we can beat out the competition. But yeah, for today, that's really all I got. If you like this episode, you should head down, hit that like button. If you really like this episode, you should hit that subscribe button, hit that notification bell so you get notifications of my next episodes. And uh, yeah, that's all I got for you. So I'll see you guys in the next one. Have a good night. See ya.